on today's episode of what's the best way to get a hernia and a torn rotator cuff we have a tiller in the shop now this thing it's been sitting around for so long that I don't actually remember how I acquired it it was either a freebie or like a two dollar purchase at the auction I don't remember which but either way here it is in the shop and apparently it's wanting a rebuild well maybe not a rebuild but at least a revival so what's the plan for this thing the main plan is get it out of the way and this is not the normal thing to come through the shop unless it was like a paid job because I hate working on lawn equipment and I had to move it out of the way to work on another project well here it is it is a Mary Tiller by Suburban can't be no GMC Suburban not nearly enough doors for that the hot rod guys would say that this thing has excellent patina I like to call that poor storage it was sitting underneath a piece of sheet metal that was formerly the roof of a tractor and if you can see that it at least still turns over so that's half the battle but these old flex grips they sort of look like they were off a snowmobile so maybe that's got something going for it now prior to dragging this thing in here I dumped out some stuff that would make the La Brea tar pits jealous but we just couldn't have that you know aroma wafting through the shop here I do appreciate the fine adjustment system for the drive here I mean this is old school just mechanical linkages simple as you get right there I wonder if this is one of those tillers that if you let go of the handles there it just kinda takes off in autopilot mode now being that it's an old Briggs basically gotta go through the basic motor stuff clean it out make sure we got spark maybe get some more of that tar out of the tank go and check the uh, bearings and pulleys make sure everything's spinning free who knows if the belt's still hanging in there other than that this is a pretty simple machine I'm sure I'll regret those words later first step is gonna be getting this thing washed off thoroughly then from there we'll start diagnosing the mechanical issues I know right off the bat we're gonna have to probably remove the entire tank and clean it out there was some pretty nasty sludge in there and looks like a good amount of rust too but at least it was holding that quote-unquote gasoline so hopefully no holes so it seems to pull over at least decent enough but we're gonna pop the spark plug out throw some oil down in there just to give it a fighting chance giving things a healthy score to ATF fluid here now the original spark plug looks like it should run a little bit of build up in there we'll give it a try with a slightly less fat out plug see if we got any spark that's a negative better check the 710 fluid Ooh, that's a little bit cloudy could have been worse if it was overflowing from a bunch of water in there though we'll throw some used diesel oil in there if we get it running see if there's anything left of this old air filter Oh, she's still mint. Now, for some reason, the throttle cable really wasn't anchored down there, so it's just kind of floating out in space. I guess we'll worry about if 
I could get that wire out of there. One of the biggest things I appreciate on older machinery like this is the simplicity. To engage the belt, what you have is a pulley down there that basically has an idler pulley that rides on the outside of the belt hooked to a little linkage arm there and this cable runs up just kind of grinds on the handle a little bit up to here and that is your drive system and when you want to put it into autopilot you just jam down this button here locks in the handle and you're rototilling pull up on it let off I mean that's about as safe as you need it to be right just don't put enough gas in this thing to make it to the next county if you let go and she goes off on a trip so it appears that there are three screws to remove the carburetor from the tank and hopefully that just drops off probably gonna tear the gasket in the process of course there had to be one hidden bolt underneath the tank well we still can't get this tank off well this has quickly devolved into tearing the carb off and dealing with a bunch of linkages that I don't know how they work there's like all these springs yeah there's a little bit of dirt down there not sure what's going on with this concrete looking like stuff carburetor was probably due for a rebuild so we're not going to give the tank a full-on restoration we're just going to give it a de-rusturation throw some gravel out of the driveway down in there spray in some carb cleaner shake it around for a while and that's probably going to be good enough a little bit of rust floating around the gasoline won't hurt things it'll help the rings seat in again so we just spent 15 minutes trying to clean out that gas tank and before we move on to the carburetor going to try and actually get spark first lift that tab oh yeah that's a lot of debris we got uh, some dead hornets, some stink bugs, mouse house. I gotta admit, I kind of forgot that there's no points in here. That could be a problem. Gonna have to find out why she ain't lightening off. Maybe we better take a look underneath the electrical tape. Normal mouse damage. But the core's still intact, unlike Chernobyl. Maybe some of them other wires got a little bit of chewage. So we sort of got the coil off, but there's still this mystery wire going down somewhere into there. This one's got me stumped. It's going to require a trip to the internet. So we're back, and I got distracted and forgot to look up that coil so back to the internet so we learned that there is indeed points on this engine now after trying to figure out how to get this thing off of the flywheel we realized that this was just a percussive removal process I mean we used a brass drift there for you know proper technique but was able to hammer this thing off a little bit of pry bar a little bit of hammer flywheel came right off so we just ran some thousand grit sandpaper through the points cleaned them up like we normally would and we'll see if we got any lightning now if you watch closely and hopefully I don't lose a finger got spark don't worry I'm a professional we almost forgot to do the proper spark plug cable replacement 3m brand 
that is basically better than new. So there's spark. Now we only have to worry about carburation and mechanical issues. I know I've said this before, but a little bit of oil strategically placed where you need it goes a long way to old machinery longevity. Now projects like this are always interesting whenever you get into something that you're not familiar with. Surprisingly enough, over all the years, I never actually worked on a Briggs with this style carb. And it might be unfamiliar, and you don't know exactly all the problem areas, but time to figure it out. That diaphragm is looking pretty grungy, but we're going to try and salvage it because I definitely don't have another one of those laying around. I doubt it was getting much fuel flow. Well, after forgetting about the carburetor for a couple of days and the sonic cleaner, it looks a whole heck of a lot better than it did before. And we've got all the other pieces uh, cleaned up and ready to go here. Give that old gasket one more shot at PB. Well, thought that the carburetor was pretty clean, but turns out we've got some other issues. There's actually a crack right here in this brass pickup tube. Find out when we were spraying carb cleaner in there and it was shooting out the side. Of course it hit me in the eye. Somehow we were able to remove this pickup without breaking it. Huh. Still a little bit of dirt in there. Initial plan was going to be take a piece of fuel line, slide it over that piece of extension tube, and just seal it up externally. But since we were actually able to get that off, we might do it the right way. Flux it. Solder it. Well, it ain't the prettiest. Probably not supposed to use gasket maker there. Probably gotten about all the miles we're going to get out of that gasket. So scrounge this one up. It's definitely the water manifold gasket off of a Thundercat. But as long as you don't tell this engine. Sort of back together. That does something I'm not fully aware of. The governor seems to be hooked up. About time to throw some gasoline in there. Well, this is some really old gas out of the Suburban, but... It's got to be good enough for this old brig. Yeah, you just want to spray gas everywhere before you start trying to start something up. Yeah, get it. Well, yeah. What do they say? Too much is just enough? Yeah, most of the gas has evaporated away. See what happens here. We'll give it a little bit of choke to begin with. That was loud. Well, need a little bit more down. Got some premix. Doesn't seem to be wanting to pull gas.
Boy, that recoil is just hating life for some reason. See if we can't inject some more life into this recoil. Turns out the bushing that was making that horrendous screeching noise was inside here underneath that cap. You can spray some oil in through there or take it off. Hit that bushing and now she's spinning. Let's try this again. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Open up the fuel screw a bit and go a bit more. I can't believe it, but all that Yama Bond didn't seal up that gas tank gasket. Yeah, it worked out well. Yeah, we'll give it an oil change. Vintage motor needs some vintage oil. I mean, this stuff's probably only 25 years old. So the thing does work. I'm not really going to show footage of trying to use it because I've never used a front tine tiller before, and it shows. But anyways, we lost some bolts here. Kind of wondered why that was rattling so much. A little bit of fuel spe spewing out, but not too bad. You got to really appreciate the complete lack of safety on this thing. I mean, you can basically set the tiller on cruise control, crank the throttle up, kill switch is nowhere in reach, and just let this thing cruise off into the sunset. It's cold blooded, that's for sure. Well, it ran when parked. <laughs>